welcome to PC Woods Kids Tech Talk. Today we're looking at the Diamond HD 6770 XOC. XOC stands for Extreme Overclocked Version, this edition, that comes with Dirt 3, the game. You can see by the box, okay, that it's got the racing cars on it from Dirt 3. Terrific game, I've played it before. If you haven't, you really would like this, as uh, it's one of the latest racing games out there. The card itself is in red, as you can see, with a nice aggressive looking fan, nice and quiet when it runs on idle. Of course, you can run it at full 100% um, percent speed, and it'll get a little bit noisy then, but uh, it comes pre-overclocked. You can have them in crossfire if you want, two cards of these, for example. All you need is a six-pin PCI Express power connector. In the box, though, it does come with a uh, Molex to PCI Express power connector, in case you have an older power supply. You can see the nice decent heat sink with the with the copper plate at the bottom, very nice. And also the Ifinity is definitely available here in this card with the display port, two DVI and your HDMI out, okay? There's the back of the PCB, the board in red, very nice. The fan, again, and in the box you get a VGA to DVI adapter, your um, Crossfire bridge connector and that power cable that I just mentioned a second ago. Now my test system here, you can see it's using the Yano AMD APU 32 nanometer architecture running at 3.5 gigahertz. I've got it on an Asus tech board and running four gigs of uh, memory here at these timings on Windows 7 64 bit. Okay, that's what I've got for my test system. As you can see, I reviewed all these parts separately, by the way, you can watch the videos for each of those. And uh, here are the specs of this video card. As you can see, 40 nanometer architecture, 800 unified, processing units, the shaders there. The bus width is 128 bit though, as opposed to 256, so keep that in mind, okay? Now it does have one gig of GDDR5 and comes pre-overclocked for you at 900 megahertz on the core and 1250 megahertz on the memory. So 50 megahertz really overclocked, okay, on both of those. So it's a little bit of an overclock, it's mild. But temperatures are reasonable at 38 degrees Celsius on idle and about 70 degrees Celsius at full load. Okay, so it gives you a good idea. Now when running benchmarks, I run a variety, a mix of them. 3D Mark Vantage at default clocks, the GPU score there is 10485. Okay, I did overclock this a teeny bit further, but it really doesn't make too much of a difference. It already comes overclocked. You can see the scores here at 10,000, basically almost 11,000. Compared to these other video cards, it gives you a good idea on the performance compared to other cards if you're shopping around and looking to spend about $150, maybe a little bit less depending on where you shop. Now, looking at 3D Mark 11, here are the scores and you can compare these scores of course with other video cards that I've reviewed. You can watch all my benchmarks on those. The Haven Benchmark 2.1 again, which uh, does the Tessellation and DirectX 11 benchmarks. Here are the frames per second on those ones. Cinebench release 11.5, you can see the OpenGL 55 frames per second roughly there doesn't really matter um, I ran it a couple times to test just to make sure it stays around 55 frames per second compared to other video cards here on that score chart using this test system of course when it comes to games if we look at stalker for example which I have by running here at 1680 times 1050 very good results here on high settings as you can see here very good results very smooth no complaints there. Running it now higher at 1920 times 1080. Again, it's still very consistent, very smooth at those high presets, okay, on the benchmarks. Now, running another older game, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. I'm waiting for Modern Warfare 3. Very good results, again, on high settings, 4AA. And, um, you know, again, no complaints if you're looking to run all kinds of uh, first-person game shooters such as that. Aliens vs. Predator, the benchmark, again, 33 um, to uh, 36 you know, frames per second roughly is what I got on those two resolutions, as you can see there on average. Again, that's pretty decent. That's pretty decent, considering. And uh, running it on uh, enthusiast settings on Crisis Warhead, that's where we're really seeing this card trying to push it to the limits, trying to reach that 30 frames per second on average, which is what you want when you play a game, at least 30 frames per second. So in reality, I really have no complaints for a mainstream card that performs like this with a nice, quiet fan. You know, of course, if you overclock it, you want the fan to run faster. It's going to get louder. But again, no complaints for me on that one. And I'd like to thank Diamond for providing it. And I hope you enjoyed this video. And thank you for watching.